Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nantat Senamat, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so in the last couple of videos, I talked about which language should you learn between Python and R. And so let's say that you have already selected R and you have become familiar with R and you are ready to make the jump in learning Python and so that you can reap the benefits of both world of Python and R by integrating Python code right inside R code. Or let's say that you have already selected Python and you are pretty familiar with Python and you're ready to make the jump in learning R and you would like to use the code that you have already created in Python and you want to embed it into your R code, you can also do that. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can embed Python code right inside your R code using the reticulate package in R. So without further ado, let's get started. So what you want to do first is go to the data professor GitHub and then you want to click on the code repository. Find the folder called Python in R, click on that and then download the only code that you see there, which is using dash reticulate.r. So what you want to do is right click on the raw link, save link as and then select a folder on your computer to save the code. So I have already have the code in my computer, so I will use that. So open up your R Studio and load up this using reticulate.r file. Okay, so today we're going to use the reticulate package in R in order to allow you to embed your Python code right inside the R environment. So if you don't already have reticulate install, so please type in install.packages parenthesis quotation mark and then reticulate. Okay, so I have already installed this R package. So let's load in the library, control enter on the line library reticulate. And then the next step is to load in the interactive Python shell. So this is the command repl underscore Python opening and closing parenthesis. And so this will load up the Python interactive shell and the default is the version 3.6, which if you load up this for the first time, it will ask whether you want to install this Python, which comes from our mini conda. And so you just say yes, and then it will install this after some time. And so the subsequent time that you load in this command, repl underscore Python, and then the opening and closing parenthesis, this will load up the interactive shell as you see here. So type in some Python code and then you will see, like for example, I'm loading up the OS package. I'm going to see the current working directory, right? And so this will print it out. But let's say that on your computer, you might have several versions of Python installed and you want a particular version to be loaded up into the R environment. You can do that by using this command, use Python function. So, and then you just specify the folder that contains the Python bin directory. So this C drive program files, Python 3.8 will be Python version 3.8 and the bin folder will be right inside here. So let's have a look. Go into the C drive, program files, Python 38. And so python.exe is located right here. So this is where we want to load in. So let me exit this interactive shell first. Then let's load up this line. So this gives me an error and because it has already initialized the Python shell, which is coming from the REPL underscore Python function. So let's clear up the R terminal by clicking on session terminate R. So this will allow the R environment to restart. So we're going to load up the library reticulate again. And this time we're not going to run the REPL underscore Python function. We're going to run use Python function, which will specify that we want it to execute this directory, C drive program files, Python 38. And then we're going to use the load Python shell here in the REPL underscore Python function. And so this here will load in version 3.8.1, whereas in the previous run, it was 3.6. Okay, so let's see if I have matplotlib installed. Oh, 
okay I don't yet have it installed so why don't I do that outside let's see what's my default oh it's 3.7.4 okay so actually on my computer I have several pythons so by default the reticulate package will load in 3.6.1 i have already installed python 3.8.1 and i have also installed anaconda which will give me python version 3.7.4 by default and so let's say for this tutorial i'm going to use this python 3.7.4 so i'm going to find the path So the path to this would be program data miniconda. Program data mini conda. Let's see if that's correct. Miniconda three. So I'm going to restart the R terminal again. Okay, and then load in the reticulate package. Then load in this miniconda three Python. And now let's load up the Python shell. Okay, and now it's version 3.7.4, which I also see in the terminal. I mean the command prompt of Windows. Let me exit this one too. And so I'm going to install matplotlib. Okay, so I'm going to install the matplotlib in the Python 3.7.4 in the Windows command prompt. So let's run that. I'll type in cmd and make sure to right click and run as administrator. Otherwise, you will get the error message that there is no permission to install. So we're going to run it as administrator. Okay, so conda install matplot lib import matplotlib.pyplot as plt okay it works so let's exit this head over back here run the repl underscore python function and now let's try to run this plt import matplotlib import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Okay, now it works. So let's exit here. Okay, now we're back in the R terminal. Notice that the R terminal will have only one greater than symbol, whereas when we're in the Python terminal, it's going to have three greater than symbol. Okay, so the next step that we want to do now is we're going to load in the Python library, the matplotlib, right inside the R environment. And so we're going to do that by using this. Instead of saying import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, we're going to say plt and then assigning it the import function. And inside the import function is the quotation matplotlib.pyplot. And so that will load in the library. And then the library will be loaded up as an object called plt. So let's do it again. Okay, and now we're going to load in the numpy. So we see plt and numpy is loaded up. And okay, and we're not going to use the iris data set here. And so in this tutorial, we're going to follow the example. So in this tutorial, we're going to follow the example in the matplotlib website to create some scatter plot. So the original link is right here. And so this is the code for you to create a scatter plot right inside your Python environment. And so this is what you're going to get. And so we're going to reproduce that right inside the R environment. Okay, so we have already loaded up the PLT NP libraries already. And now let's generate the random number by using the NumPy package. So the original Python code will be NP dot random dot seed and then the function and then inside is one nine six eight zero eight zero one which is a number for assigning the seed number and so if you're putting up this line of code 
you will get an error. And so according to the solution on this page, we have to add the L and this will solve the issue here. Okay, and then we're gonna assign the value of 50 to the N variable. And then instead of using the dot, we're gonna use with the R symbol instead, which is the dollar sign. So we're gonna replace all dots here with the dollar sign. And so that will be the equivalent in R. So now we have already created an X variable, which will contain the random number and Y as well. Colors, and then we're going to run this. Okay, and we're gonna modify this code a little bit. We're gonna add L here, L here as well. And we're gonna convert this as numeric. because if we're not doing this, then we will get an error. Let's run that. Okay, now we have the area. Let's attempt to make the scatter plot. Okay, and so we're gonna rerun the code again, load up the reticulate package, and we're gonna use the Python 38 version. Okay, so we have to Okay, and so we're gonna load up the Python 38 version here, 3.8 version, because the previous run didn't work. And let's give it a go, library reticulate. And specify that we want to use Python 3.8 here. And load in the matplotlib package, numpy package. Okay, and we're gonna rerun these blocks of code. Control enter. Okay, now the moment of truth. Okay, it works. So now let's show the plot. Let's see if this works. All right, so it works. And the Qt is working properly here with this Python 38, which is the native Python, not from the Anaconda. So apparently the Qt package is working for this Python 3.8.1, which is the one downloaded from Python website. And so apparently the matplotlib for the Anaconda did not work owing to some error in the Qt package. And so this works, so it's all that matters. So when your computer has multiple Python version, please test out which one works for you and load up that particular version. And the great thing about Reticulate is that you can do that. So I'm gonna comment this out. So in my case, this one is working. Okay, and let's close it up. So this one will tell you the Python version that is currently loaded right here, Python 3.8. And it's telling us that we impose this Python version by using the use Python function. Okay, there you have it. You have now successfully embed Python code right inside the R environment. So let's say that you want to play around with the Python shell, shall we? Okay, and let's say you created some variables like a equals to one, b equals to two, and then let's make it a string like hello. Okay, and let's say that I will exit this interactive shell and here, I can type in PY dollar sign. So I will have access to all of the variables that I have defined in the interactive Python shell. So just by typing PY dollar sign and then the name of the variable. See, and then I get the value of one pi and then the C variable will give me the string hello. Okay, so very handy if you want to code in the interactive shell and then you could call in the respective variables in there. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.